everybody, welcome to episode 26 of A Fern Between Us. 26, that's half a year. I am, <laughs> <laughs> we are two of the four owners of Vivac Winery. Uh, I am Jesse, this is Michelle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with her guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was working. Uh, we do have a special guest today. We have Chef Johnny V. If you haven't, uh -huh. whoop, whoop, if you have not taken one of his classes, you are missing out. Uh, Johnny is actually somewhat of a celebrity chef. He's oh, been, absolutely. He's been <laughs> around so the world, working all over the place. Uh, he has he appears on talk shows. He's a food writer. He is. Uh, just a phenomenal personality. He has been. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> he has been teaching classes uh, with Las Cosas in Santa Fe for twenty years, and his cookbook, which is amazing, by the way, you absolutely need to have a copy of this, is in its second edition already. Uh, he also is super chef with Cooking with Kids program at local elementary schools, which is amazing, and also working with teens through the Youth Shelter USA, which I love that you do that. That's so cool. <laughs> and of course, one of the biggest things for us is that he has cooked at some of our amazing picking parties. He makes those super special. And he has honored us with a number of those over the years. I don't know how we have... Uh, been so lucky. Yeah, been so <laughs> lucky and somehow uh, talked him into coming up multiple times. But it has always been fantastic. So welcome to the show, Johnny V. Thank you. The tricky thing about cooking at your folks is having to be there so early in the morning. <laughs> I think I have to get up at 6 a.m. to come out there. I'm like, ah. Yeah, you, you chefs are kind of more night owl types, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, The earliest I ever do a cooking class is 10 a.m., but it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and just, I think every year we've been blessed with gorgeous weather in October, right? When we do it at your folks? Yeah, late September, early October. Yeah, late September. It's so gorgeous and so much fun, and your dear folks are so fabulous and so helpful, and <laughs> your kids are involved, and we have your nieces and nephew and your <laughs> daughter, and your family, and it's fun. so that's a those are that's sort of the cream of what I do. You know, I do regular classes for twenty years, twenty one years, but doing those special events is what's more fun. You know. And so you're now currently teaching classes online, and how do yeah. people sign up for those? Yeah, so we, I think the last in-store class we did was actually March 15th, and it's funny when I think back, it was a vegetarian class, which is so funny, but I remember we had started to hear about COVID, and so I said, well, we'll just separate the students by six feet. And when everybody comes in, they'll wash their hands and that'll be fine. And we'll be, you know, la, la, la. <laughs> and I think on the 16th is when stuff shut down, you know? Yeah. So I think I thought that's going to be a little bit of a pain, but so we, uh, the store closed, the mall closed where Las Cosas is. Uh, and then the store was able to do, uh, which was good to continue the store's sales, uh, they were able to do curbside delivery. Oh, so great. all through when the actual mall was closed, we would run items out to people's car. And what was amazing to, for both of you, people were cooking and are cooking more than ever before. Yeah. Yes, and they are drinking Crazy. more than ever before, which we're really excited about as well. <laughs> yeah, and... The same thing, I think people are, uh, you know, drinking more or entertaining more at home. So all my wine friends, including you, I think, you know, they say, well, restaurant sales maybe have been affected, but home sales are actually strong. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think that's a good thing. So if somebody wants to sign up for one of your classes, they go to Las Cosas? 
website? Yeah. So the Las Cosas website is lascosascooking.com. And then there's a page for cooking classes. The great thing, you can register online. Um, you don't have to even make a phone call. It's got a full description of a class. Uh, so I'm doing four Saturday classes starting um, starting on this coming Saturday. And I'm calling the topics Saucy Saturdays. Oh, <laughs> cute! So we're doing four ethnic weeks of sauces. So this week is New Mexico sauces. Next week is French. Third week is Italian. And then the fourth week it is Asian. Ooh. So there are now 15 minutes. And I'll demonstrate three to four sauces and then use them in a dish. So you'll see how to make, like on Saturday, red chili sauce and, you know, how to turn that into a sauce for chili rellenos. So it's good. And we've, it's amazing because with in-store classes, you're only appealing to people in Santa Fe right. or visitors. But we've discovered our Zoom classes can be all around the country. So we had people from Denver and people from Austin doing the Zoom stuff that we've done so far. So we do so, have some friends that are abroad that watch the show in the recorded version. And I do you sell a recorded version of your class that they could yeah, purchase? What we, yeah. What we need to do, uh, we are going to start recording them. We just sort of figured that out today. So hmm. one of my most popular Zoom classes so far uh, is high altitude cooking. Oh. Because it's so different here. But I need to be able to have that something people could always access. Mm -hmm. Because if you know, if you move here, suddenly you don't know how to make the cake. You know? That's <laughs> awesome. Well, Johnny, let's jump into some questions. We do have some questions for you. The first one yeah, is that, um, that uh, one of the things that we have been asked repeatedly over the 26 weeks that we've been doing this now um, is... People are trying to survive homeschooling, work, you know, entertaining their kids. A lot of people have little ones and they need hand, hands-on activities. What, yeah. in your professional opinion, are the best things to try to cook with little ones? And yeah. you can also make educational. Yeah, you know, it's good because working with cooking with kids, I have been for 10 years. And we call ourselves super chefs. There's, uh, I think, about 12 of us now that go a couple times a month to the elementary schools and actually cook with the kids. So with uh, There's a, a teacher instructor in each school, elementary school. We're not doing that right now, but we did, you know, we have been. And so I've been involved a little bit with discovering what the children Get excited about the most you know yeah one thing that they do that's so successful is they get the kids tasting ingredients so you go to the store and you buy five different apples and you get the kids to sample the apples and then make something simple with them you know and we do a lettuce tasting we do a squash tasting oh that is uh, so cool all different fruits and you know to buy one apple in each variety is not expensive so that really got kids thinking about, you know, they know what an apple is, but do they know, wow, this is an apple or this is a, yeah. you know, so that was fun. And then I think it's interesting to get, which we do in cooking with kids, um, introduce the kids to ethnic cooking early on. Mm -hmm. We make something called an injera, which is a buckwheat pancake from Ethiopia. We make black bean fritters from South America. We make potato latkes for the Jewish holidays. Yeah. And it gives the kids a variety and curiosity that I think they haven't had before, you know. I know it's tricky because I'll, I know a lot of people were told, get out of the kitchen when your parents were cooking, you know. <laughs> but now I think the new trend is get your kids involved. I mean, we were told we had to do the dishes, but we never got to cook. <laughs> yes, right? So, you know, try to get them involved and make it interesting. And certainly, even if you're not dining out yet, 
bring in some ethnic, you know, Thai food, Japanese food, whatever, uh, to the home place, and maybe have the kids, you know, do a little research, see what Korean food is all about, you know. I love it. I think when kids study something, don't make it too scholastic, but, and then teaching kids how to do sushi, I think, is a blast. Ah, that yeah. that is so so easy, and um, I don't think most of us have ever thought of that. But that is fantastic. Uh, let's yeah, jump into the this... kids love sushi, right? And, well, and you know, let's uh... do a yeah. We do a summer kids camp. They all want to make a tie. It's crazy. <laughs> nice. So you know, that kind of rolls help. into our second question, which is for teenagers who a lot of them are struggling with uh, not having social interaction like they're used to. They don't necessarily want to be hanging out with their parents either. Is there yeah. some tips to being able to do a Zoom cooking uh, with their friends or maybe a quote-unquote date uh, where they I can cook something? I think it's a great idea. I've got a young man work has been working for me last year who's 15 now, but he is so, he is so missing the interaction with his friends. But even when he came to assist with me in the classes, he loved the interaction with people. So I could see that would be tricky. I mean, I, I think that's a great idea. Like try to get, you know, the parents would have to be organized, but you know, buy some ingredients, give them to all the kids to have and teach them how to make a stir fry or something. A great idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hard is to engage teenagers, not all teenagers, but if they're doing school on Zoom, you know, they want to be doing something, you know. I just worry about the kids that are already in their room on their phone, even at the best of times. You know? Yeah. Get out of the house. Go outside. You know? <laughs> right? A little vitamin D sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So um, another question is that uh, these days trying to manage just to get showered and dressed uh, in the day seems like a lot. So for uh, a lot of people, they're asking, how do I make a fast dish that is 100% comfort food that's going to be emotionally satisfying? You know, I like that because I like that question. I'm not a big fan of pre-prepared foods, you know. You know, you could go to Whole Foods and they've got that huge prepared food section, but I'm not a big fan of a lot of pre-prepared food that you can get anywhere. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm single, so I look for things I can make quick for myself, especially if I'm cooking all day when I get home from work. Um, I can do a hundred dishes with a rotisserie chicken. I was going to say I can do a hundred things with a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> but I can make a hundred dishes with a rotisserie chicken, you know. So you make tacos with it. You make mashed potatoes and gravy for it. You turn the carcass into soup. So that might be something you could engage the kids to say, all right, how can we make this dish different tomorrow? <laughs> you know? Yeah. How can we be creative? And I, you know, of course, in New Mexico, we love tacos. And there's so many great fillings you can whip up for tacos that don't take a whole lot of preparation and stuff, you know? <laughs> and yeah. also know how to make a basic quesadilla. So maybe introduce them to that. Also, it just occurred to me, you know, taking your kids to the farmer's market would be such a great because when kids see food in my summer kids camp a couple of years ago I had a nine year old kid and we went to the farmer's market with them and there was a big basket of arugula and I had asked him what his least favorite food is and he said you know I really don't like arugula he was nine years old I'm like you're nine and you know that you don't like arugula <laughs> so we went to the farmer's market and I had him taste it out of a freshly picked bunch of arugula. And all of a sudden he said, oh my God, I like arugula. Yeah. <laughs> so I think pizzas is a great 
pizzas are a great thing to get the kids to pull out the dough and then let them create the toppings, you know? Mm-hmm. We grew up with tomato sauce and parmesan cheese, but let them put whatever, bacon, jalapeno, oh, just parmesan. No pineapple, no pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so you know let, encourage them to be creative and I think if they get to participate a lot of the pe- families I know with kids that are real foodies is they give the kids Friday night dinner every week you know give them money and let them go shop oh fun and, and they love it the kids love it you know that's that's kind of a, a good way like if you teach them to cook then you can kind of enlist them as slave labor, but, you know, you won't get, you know, shunned for it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you make them cook don't once make a... them have to do the cleanup every night. Right. Because that's, that's what makes kids think, Ugh, I don't want to cook, you know. I like the so idea maybe, of having them you shop know, guys, for we, it. We, we clean up. Yeah, I like the idea of having them shop for it. That's a whole nother budget and... Yeah, and that's mm, a huge lesson. Yeah, money management. Sure. That's... That's a good one. Yeah. All right. And then, so, you know, you can't really, don't teach them about wine too early, but that'll oh, come later. Oh, yeah. No, we teach them it, you know, as soon as they're out of the womb. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you yeah, did, well, you did you mention. Say, now, honey, what wine do you think is going to go with the dish you're preparing for the family? Exactly. Um, so <laughs> you did camera. mention that you are single. I don't know how you haven't been snapped up yet. But our final <laughs> question for today uh, the other ones were actually compilations because we've been getting the same kind of questions for a long time. Yeah. And this last one is very specific for you. Um, this person wrote in that they are really sick of the one pot meal that is being recommended, yep. the refrigerator grazing, and is desperately in need of a self-indulgent meal for one, one person. Yep. That the and is deserving of a Zoom date where they can get dressed up, you know, like get a little fancy. Get out of your bathrobe, actually take your bathrobe off. Exactly. Yeah. Open a nice bottle of wine. What I would like that it. be? You know, um, I do a couple of classes, Michelle, called, I have one called One Dish Wonders. Ooh. But I also have one called, what do I call it? Um... It's kind of like dishes that are easy to make. Oh, there's the cat. <laughs> that, yeah. that was an awesome backdrop. That's why, that's why I'm single, you guys. <laughs> I'm the cats. Um, like, I think a, a sort of gourmet, simple dish is like chicken piccata, where you saute scallopini mm. and lemon and capers. Mm. That could be veal marsala or chicken marsala. Mm-hmm. The only thing you really had to learn how to flatten the meat. Now you can buy thinly sliced veal and chicken at the grocery store. Mm. In my cookbook, there is uh, a chicken piccata that I think I hear is one of the most replicated recipes, you know. So that's kind of fancy. I'm either feast or famine here. I'm either standing at the counter... <laughs> eating a rotisserie chicken out of the box <laughs> my VVAC Riesling <laughs> in my bathrobe or I'm literally making veal marsala with mascarpone mashed potatoes, bacon wrapped asparagus, and a souffle for dessert. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. M- mascarpone mashed potatoes? I need you to back up yeah. for a second. It's <laughs> the richest thing you will ever, ever eat. Instead of milk, you put mascarpone in your mashed potatoes. Uh, my mind is blown. I am going to have yeah. to make mashed potatoes you instantaneously. I think Giada De Laurentiis came up with that. Realize this is a TV food host who never eats a single bite of her food. Mm. And she's, right, stick fit. <laughs> oh, so tricky. we're not going to talk about COVID weight. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Hey, um, I, I had somebody text me that said I look good in orange. Um, do you think I look good, en- good enough in orange to move in with you and then you could have two people to cook for? 
or maybe totally. three. Absolutely. We're, we're free thinkers. Wow. <laughs> Did you see how fast he moved out of the, the house? The other thing we have to mention is, Michelle, your whole family is in my cookbook. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. We, we did yes. make the picture. A bunch of you is a shot down the counter. Yeah. We did a class years ago mm -hmm. for shooting the, the cookbook. Yes, that's right. Funny, we all look so, we all look a little bit younger, but a little bit, you know. A little I bit. I think you had long hair, didn't you? What's that? I think you had long hair in that picture. Oh, yes. Yeah. For um, most of my life, I actually had long hair. And um, yeah. I don't know what's happening. The weight is coming on and the hair is coming off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're lucky you got a haircut. Remember, all of us were, were uh, not getting our haircut. Right at the beginning of COVID, they said, just think, in three weeks, you're going to know what everybody's real hair color is. <laughs> yeah, and that's not nice, but we do actually have yeah. a YouTube video of Jesse cutting my hair, which is pretty entertaining. So if anybody oh, wants to see that, that's, that's on our funny. YouTube channel. <laughs> my other favorite saying from this is, just think there's a whole generation of school kids who are being homeschooled by day drinkers. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be Watch see how that works out, right? We'll see yeah. how that works out. It's a massive experiment <laughs> on real yeah. life human beings. <laughs> so before we actually wrap up the session, we have Karen's questions for you. So the idea is to just shoot off the hip, just an instinct of a response to these. You don't have to think about them. Okay. That's the fun. All right. So the first one is, what is your favorite smell? My favorite smell? Yeah. You know, I think I have an espresso machine. I think in the morning, a shot of coffee coming through the espresso machine gets me out of bed practically. That's a great question. <laughs> oh, I love that smell too. It's a good answer. All right. Yeah. When you die, <laughs> a little morbid, uh, what do what you, you hope? If, Michelle, if. <laughs> yes. If you die. If you die someday. Okay. Someday, like millions of years from now. Uh, if you die, what do you hope at least one person will say about you at your memorial? He was funny. <laughs> you are funny. You are. You're awesome. I think we'll definitely say that if we ever have to go That'll to That'll probably be the first thing. <laughs> I'll say he was a good chef. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next is what is the best advice you've ever been given? You know, years ago, I worked in a fantastic restaurant, actually up in Canada, in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, where there's a fantastic Shakespeare festival every summer. I bet. I was on, there on vacation, fell in love with this gorgeous restaurant. And the owner was um, uh, a tyrant, but it was the most fabulous restaurant in Ontario. And his, his advice to me, was if you're not ready to open the restaurant because you're not set up, kitchen isn't ready, staff aren't ready, don't open. It's not worth it. And I always thought, you know, that is a great advice. Then you also learn to make sure you're ready, you know. But he said if you're not ready for anything, for a cooking class, for... You know, a dinner, you, if you're not ready, I mean, I don't know if you want to keep your friends out on the front porch, <laughs> which makes you learn to make sure you're ready by God, you know. I love that advice. That is really good. It's question. really good. Yeah. And we're all guilty of not following that advice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And don't, don't do drugs was the other one. <laughs> well, that right. one's no fun. Right? <laughs> all right. So um, we just have a couple more left. What did you want to be uh, when you were a kid? What did you want to be when you grew up? I really wanted to be in showbiz. Oh, I can see I, that. You know, in high school, I was in all the musicals. And the plays and stuff. Uh, actually, went to college thinking I was going to move to New York and go into show business. Um, but then I realized that, you know, that's a hard career to pursue. So I'd already been cooking in restaurants when I was in high school at a burger shack and stuff. And that was kind of fun. 
So I did really a restaurant management course with theater and music classes, thinking, well, it'll give me something to fall back on. I moved to New York uh, right out of college to New York City. I even have a shot somewhere around here, you wouldn't believe. But I really wanted to be an actor. Got a job at a restaurant, like all other actors do. <laughs> Working with all these actors. And I actually had a degree in restaurant management. Wow. And it occurred to me, I could be working in the career I studied while I waited to be discovered for Broadway. Unfortunately, Broadway never called, so, or fortunately. <laughs> so, and, I, there, and I know you guys know this. There is a theatricality to the restaurant biz for sure. And the restaurant family that you work with is like the cast of a show. Mm. And it's all the drama, all the people, all the characters sleeping together, <laughs> all, the drama, all the abuse of Broadway. You know? So I kind of thought, oh, this is fun. And then I didn't. I, I don't think I ever had the discipline to be an actor where I would do dance class and study and singing. And, and I wasn't big on rejection. So all my friends that were in showbiz, they'd go to an audition and they'd get knocked out, you know? And I thought, oh, I couldn't handle that. So I've been lucky that the career I've really followed, you do get some good perks with positive feedback and you know so i still parade around here and sing but there's not <laughs> much audience you know? well as a uh, fellow theater major i feel that our theater training really enhances when we give classes when i give a wine class i am very comfortable in exactly. front of a group even what you... you're doing now you know like well, yeah. i you know through the years i've had many guest chefs at las cosas mm -hmm. i've had of fame in Santa Fe stand up in front of an audience and go blank. Oh. Like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Mm -hmm. And they're shy and they might be great chefs, but they don't know how to, to uh, share that experience with people, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's fun. And I, you know, I've done some local television stuff and uh, there's a, a program on PBS that they shoot from Portales, New Mexico. I think I've been on like six years and they show it around the country. So it's fun. In fact, my friend Joseph Reed from Joseph's restaurant, you know? Yes. He, he was up in Denver in a hotel, got out of the shower, he had the TV on and I was on this program and it was on his television. I love and, it when that stuff happens. And heard my voice. And he's like, oh my God, where is Chef Johnny B? <laughs> That's awesome. We're in this room, so. So, Johnny, so, we have one more question before we let you go. What's your favorite word or phrase? Word, word or phrase? Yep. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> I could say go yourself. I, yeah. I, don't, not, I really want to, you know, <laughs> but I don't. I mean, I, I, yeah, but that. I think it a lot. You know? <laughs> that is awesome. Johnny, what thank I'm, you, you know what so I want, much. What I'm dying to do on Facebook, which, of course, I would never do this, but, you know, if, if somebody disagrees with me vehemently, I always want to put in the comment, you know, I don't actually know you well enough to tell you to go yourself. <laughs> in this case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> I don't want cooking with kids to see that. Yeah. I know. Being a business owner. You know, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. I know. It, it's tricky. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for coming. Everybody watching, please go to Las Cosas Cooking School dot com. I, I, I think yeah. I think we can't I can't do it on Saturday, but I think I'm gonna do the next three Saturdays after that. Like I'll yeah. send well, you yeah, I'll send you guys a link. You should just yeah. watch it because and the I'd really, board. I'd really like to uh, look at the ones that are pre-recorded and purchasing those where you email yeah. us the Yeah, those are, yeah, then you can watch them anytime. Mm -hmm. And let me mention for you guys, you know, I'm writing for New Mexico Magazine oh, now. Yes. And you were so kind to send me 
samples of a couple of wines for the November issue is all about Thanksgiving. And I had to write about what wine to drink for Thanksgiving because people don't really know, you know. Yeah. And my favorite, really, is the Riesling because I still think many Americans <laughs> think that Riesling is sweet. And yes. the Vivac Riesling is crisp. I'm a huge Sauvignon Blanc fan. It absolutely tickles my Sauvignon Blanc palate. But it's a lively wine that I think uh, holds up to all the flavors that are going on with Thanksgiving, you know. Well, so cheers to that. And yes. For that November issue, you'll see some lovely <laughs> photos. Thank you so much for including us and being a part of our lives and a, one of our I know, friends. I miss you guys. I know. <laughs> Thank you for being all on right, the we'll show. We'll be together soon. Sounds so, good. Sounds good, Johnny. Thank you so much. All right, Jim. cheers. Good luck with the harvesting. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so here we are moving, and I'm going to pick it up instead of rattle it across so oh, that that's Jesse a good doesn't gump. say something about how I don't know how to move a <laughs> well, computer it was always bouncing and stuff. <laughs> All right, babe. Quick little check-in. Oh, man, you've had a big day. Yeah, it worked out today, yesterday. We um, This is my busiest. Worked out? Like, mm. uh, worked out work-wise. But yeah, it's kind of like that. It is physical. <laughs> it's physical as heck. Uh, 10 ton a day. Had a couple ton earlier this week. We got 9 ton coming on Saturday. Um, we're running out of supplies, you know. Uh, we're uh, trying to figure, you know, trying to figure out, you, you try to figure out what you need for fermentation and all the stuff. Yeah. And uh, none of and these then, are like things that I'm supposed to know about, right? Yeah. No. Okay, good. And, and, but you know, everything starts, you know, uh, as, the, as the grapes come in, they're different than they were last year. So you don't know exactly how much, you know, tartaric acid we're going to need just to adjust the levels or whatever on a warm year, you need more on a cool year, you need less, but you don't know how how warm, how cool, how, you know, mm -hmm. exactly. So, of course, we never get it exactly right. We either have too much or too little, and this year we have too little of that one. But, you know, two little things here and there, and then it's fun. Mostly Having a good time. We made our Cabernet Rosé today. Ooh. Or, you know, pressed it off. So it's, uh, I'm fairly excited once again. I, I won't know for a week or two if it's, as amazing as last year's, but I would assume it's going to be pretty good. Oh, oh, <laughs> it is hands down my favorite rosé, and it's not just that I'm part of the Vivac Winery family. I literally drink rosés mm. all day. <laughs> um, all she kinds, does too. <laughs> she does. All kinds of rosés from all over the place, uh, and the rosé of Cab is absolutely one of the ones at the top. I love the yeah. rosé of Sangiovese as well. Yeah. But I'm super excited that another yeah. uh, vintage is coming our way. Exactly. That was awesome getting to talk to Johnny V. I Dude, miss I love that guy. him. <laughs> and I love that guy. not getting to have our <laughs> annual picking party this year has been a little mm. bit of a shock to the system. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people that love to come to it, it's been a shock to them. That's been rough. I'm sorry, you guys. Next year, it's going to be <laughs> bigger and better. We hope if the birds don't get crops and oh, uh, the birds got a the lot beard. of the grapes this year. They were just hungry. The uh, oh. yeah, out in the I guess out in the in the mountains or whatever. They're what they're or, or other fruit as well. Like last year, we didn't even have to net the grapes because there was so much fruit everywhere and so much lushness. Like the grape, the birds didn't get any grapes hardly. This year. You could tell a month ago, as soon as there was any sugar in those grapes, like you just saw birds everywhere and it's like, uh-oh. So we put the nets on and still, I, we have about a, maybe a 30% crop, I guess. I don't know. And they got a lot. They got a lot. And so luckily they're getting ripe early. So we've been able to pick all the whites. We'll pick the rest of the reds um, next week uh down in Velarde as well and then there's this weird thing where the birds are also dying so they like they come in they eat the grapes and then also you just find dead birds everywhere so we don't know what's going on yes yeah. it's, it's not 
what you know we don't spray pesticides it's not like a thing like that it's just uh no it's a whole you know regional thing yeah all of new all mexico right. colorado arizona texas supposedly it's well going that's not a fun but topic anyway. <laughs> so anyway let's talk about Weird. the riesling which riesling. johnny v did talk about a little bit he and he is, had in his glass it's crazy he had in his glass and he's <laughs> writing uh for santa fe magazine uh november issue including this um so that's super awesome thank you johnny um but tell us about the riesling the riesling uh i think this is the 2018 2018 2018 i know in 2019 all right you think about it and i'm gonna jump into some information because uh, you know we're already <laughs> over time here you go so um riesling is uh a lot of times thought of as sweet johnny v talked about that a little bit and that is a misconception. Any wine can be dry or sweet. It's due to the fermentation process and what the winemaker wants to do with it. And if you ferment it completely dry, it has so many beautiful aspects that really give it some great, great attributes and food friendly, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pairing, uh, uh, food friendly options. Yeah, that it's, sounds It's good. more food friendly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> anyway, so uh, <laughs> the point being that uh, old world style Rieslings are focused on the minerality, the acidity, and this wine is very much so that. Mm -hmm. It's high altitude, so it has more of that mineral content. It has more of that natural mm -hmm. acidity, and that's what makes it pair so nicely with food. So German Rieslings, if you get a cabinet, that's really the lowest uh, level of sugar or uh, uh, residual sugar that you are generally going to find. You want to definitely be looking in the cabinet realm of... We'd, um, we'd call it off dry. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit sweeter, but the acidity is also higher. Yeah. So, it so it's almost balances. imperceptible. It's a lovely, lovely wine. Uh, they come in at like one to two percent, but but that, um, especially the one percent, you can't even really tell that they're sweet. Exactly, they're and beautiful, and they've got this like uh, petrol. This petrol, like which somebody said after one of our shows, <laughs> they wrote into us and said, "Wait, petrol is a good thing," and yeah, you want, you want your wine, specific wines, to be a little bit like gasoline. It's awesome. You, you know what else is not that bad of a... I've heard people be bummed about... Yes, we drank a whole bottle, by the way, in the last 37 <laughs> minutes between the two of us. Um, <laughs> um, it was but, all, yeah. I, I'm thirsty. I worked hard. Don't I deserve it? I mean, come on. <laughs> no. He's been making wine for you people. This, uh, you this, people. <laughs> you people. No, this uh, yeah, this mentality is probably not a good one. It's like, I... I um, you know, anyway, uh, 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 wow, falling apart here. Br uh, uh, barnyard, it smells like a horse stall, is actually kind of a good thing, too. <laughs> Sometimes it can be bad, just like petrol can be bad, but some people mm, can like that. Some good stuff, sometimes, and it some can of the best also in the be world. Can, if it's too much, it can be considered a huge flaw, and yeah. you know, so it depends on. What you're doing with it, but the word mousy, never good. No, that's not never good. good. <laughs> or um, cat pee, you don't want that either. No, no, you're but right. horse yeah. sweat, horse yes, sweat, saddle you. sweat. Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> wow, <laughs> somehow, if you um drink a bottle of Riesling really fast, things seem to fall apart. It hasn't gone all to my head yet, so I don't think. You can count a whole bottle to be in here yet. Okay. Or half a bottle. Hmm. All right. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, I loved the Johnny V brought up so many aspects. I hope you guys got some good tidbits from that. If, um, if any of y'all join the classes, I guess we'll see you and not this week, not this Saturday, but you know the next three. I really, really, really want to do. That sounds awesome to me. But, that'd be really fun. So that'd I think really we should. Fun. Yeah, and maybe we can, uh, gonna... you know, suggest some wines to go with the sauces he's going to be making. Ooh, that'd that's be a fun, good idea, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, next week, we don't have a guest, so we welcome all of your weird questions, which you guys tend to like to write in. Yay! So we've got an opportunity to answer more of those, and we're going to taste the Cabernet Franc, which somehow we haven't tasted in the list, even what? though it's almost out. Ah, oh, bummer. I know. Bad shame. For shame. But it's going to be fun. <laughs> And uh, so we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining in. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Have a good one. <laughs>